Today we're talking about the top five major mistakes that far too many resellers make. Hey, it's Don, the Auction Professor. Today we're going to talk about some of the mistakes that people make when they're reselling. One mistake I see all the time is when people are out buying to resell. Just because something looks fabulous or looks like it's worth a million dollars does not mean that it is. I see far too many people spending a ton of money on stuff that just isn't even worth what they paid for it, just based on the sheer looks and how it was displayed when they bought it. It's a big, huge mistake that just far too many people seem to make. The same thing goes for quantity. Just because you see a mass quantity of items in front of you, it's a reasonable price, doesn't mean there's a dime to be made in those lots. You've got to research everything, whether it looks awesome, whether it looks like a million dollars, or whether there's so much of it there that you think there's no way you can't lose out. You've got to factor in your time. You've got to look through enough of the merchandise to make sure that it's worth something before you go out and buy it. I see tons of people just hopping on sales and specials on multiple lots, thinking that that's the way to do it. And again, it's hit or miss when you do that. You have to research your items. Don't spend the money unless you are sure you're going to get a return on your investment, regardless of what it looks like and regardless of how much there is of it. Now, another mistake many people make when they're getting offers on bins, buy it now options, and they just accept it because they're worried they won't get another offer on that item. It's just not that case. You're just going to sell more and more items lower if you do that all the time. If they're offering you less than you think you should get for it after you've done diligent research, don't take it. Then you can counter back with a reasonable offer that's within your limits. That's a big plus here. Another thing is not pricing them too low to begin with. If you price them low and put a best offer, you're going to sell them much less than they should be. I see many people pricing things at what they sell for and then still taking an offer on that. You've got to know how the game works, but don't just take the first offer that comes in if you feel it's not a good offer on the item. You'll be giving away money left and right if you do that, and people will know they can come back to you and offer you lowball offers and continuously try and get items from you for almost nothing. Another major blunder is not worrying about your feedback. Feedback is so important these days. You will get penalized by eBay for having bad feedback. The same goes for Amazon and almost any platform. The higher you rank, the better chance you have of getting a sale out of your items. That is a key here. Many people don't think when they're doing stuff and don't realize what can net you a negative feedback. And probably the biggest one I see people doing is canceling sales because they weren't happy with what it went for or they maybe sold it already on another platform and didn't realize to take it down. Now, if you cancel a listing, you can still get dinged by the buyer, especially if they didn't ask you to cancel it. So always take all of that in consideration. Feedback these days helps to build trust for a seller. So if you've got great feedback and you've done this for a long, Long time someone looking for an item will know that you will handle it properly feedback is so much more important I get people all the time telling me their sales are bad and they've had this issue and that issue after looking at their feedback it's 98.2 96.5 these are numbers that just aren't good at least on eBay Amazon it's a little different story you will still see people buying on Amazon with those lower feedback ratings bottom end is feedback is super important to you these days now, another mistake that I see a lot of people make is they don't treat this like a business and they fall to sob stories in these heartbreaking stories, trying to get you to sell them something for cheaper money, trying to get out of a sale. It's not like when you're in person and you can see, obviously, whether the person's telling you the truth or not in many cases. Online, you have no clue, but you've got to use your better judgment. When you get some of these sob stories, look at it as a business. This is a business. I separate personal and emotional aspects aspects of my life from my business life. So I don't go for sob stories for the most part, unless it's somebody I've dealt with for a very long time and I know that person. I've heard hundreds of stories that were no way legitimate stories, especially when I was working with people in front of me. You'd hear all kinds of stories, so don't trust the sob stories. Most people are trying to get it cheaper, and in some cases I've had people tell me they have fallen for a sob story only to come back later and find out the person they sold it to was selling that same item for two and three times what they sold it 
it to them for. The point though is that this is a business. You are here to sell something. If you sell something to somebody for less money, you are losing money. If you sell something that has watchers on it to somebody for less money, you might have been able to sell it for more to start with. For us, we sell a lot of vintage items, and I get sob stories on vintage items. If there's something heartbreaking going on in someone's life, they don't really need to be coming and buying vintage collectibles and then coming and trying to get them for cheaper money. It just doesn't make sense. One of the ones I hear all the time is, this is a member of my family, I can't afford to buy this, but I'd love to have it back in our possession. You know, it's a business. If they don't want to meet my estimate, no matter what the reason is, I am fair across the board. I don't treat anybody differently for any reason, whether it's family member, a sob story, a heartbreaking story, whatever the case may be, I treat it as a business. I heard sob stories all the time as an RM, as a GM, people telling me why they couldn't come to work and all kinds of different reasons. 95% of them were just BS stories. I relate this right back to online selling as well. Most of the items I sell are not necessities in any way, shape or form. There should never be any kind of issue where a sob story would come into play for a postcard or a vintage magazine or a vintage toy. It's just not the case in my book, but that's how I look at that topic. And Probably the biggest one that I see a lot is the customer is always right. That is not always the case. Anybody who's been taken by an issue on eBay or eBay sided with the buyer, even though you know you were right, that's a perfect example of why the customer is not always right. Many times there'll be somebody trying to con you or rip you off. Clothing sellers know this all the time with higher returns where people seem to have worn the item and then mailed it back and said there was an issue with it. I hear that quite often. I've seen return rates with some sellers in the 15 and 20% range on clothing. In collectibles and vintage, you hardly ever have a return in that aspect of it. But the customer is not always right. I will stand by my morals, even if it means I get a ding, as long as I know I am in the right. I will always fight that sort of thing as well with eBay and hopefully have enough information, such as an email or comments that this person has made, or possibly looking at feedback they've left for other people to show a pattern of this type of behavior from a specific buyer. You've got to cover yourself in this. Just don't always assume that the customer is always right. That is one way you can surely be taken advantage of left and right if you fold on certain issues. I always know what the rules are as well on whatever platform I may be selling on, so I know what the rules are for the buyer, what type of feedback he can leave, what he can say in an email, what he has to say for me to be able to win a case as well. There's many issues where a customer can actually say something in an email and immediately lose the case because of a simple word or a statement that they make. Any threats for leaving bad feedback is a perfect example. If a customer leaves or a buyer on any site pretty much leaves threats that they'll leave bad feedback unless you do something for them, give them money back, give them a refund, whatever the case may be, that is strictly against the rules on eBay as well as other platforms. So the customer is not always right. Know the rules. When in doubt, call the platform, call eBay, call Amazon, get in touch with somebody and see what the rules are on those. Don't just fold to a customer thinking you will get in trouble or get a ding when you give in to a buyer like this and you give him a refund when you know he doesn't deserve it, when you know he's trying to con you, he can still leave bad feedback for you. So don't think that's always going to save you. So just keep that in mind when you're doing business online. You have to be careful of these sorts of issues. The customer is not always right. But that's what I have for you today. Hopefully that gives you some ideas and some thoughts. If you enjoyed this video, please hit that like button down below. You can also hit the bell icon to be notified if I post new content or go live, subscribe and tell all your friends. American Motors. Now, full-size luxury in a selection of uncompromising automobiles. 
This luxury car is a now car, an ambassador, GPL. With shimmering luxury, set in sculptured steel and gifted with satin smooth performance. Full-sized luxury cars created for today. Lush, tempting luxury with plush appointments, elegant options, luxury. Priced for the young man who wants his luxury car now. Designed with your safety in mind. Ambassador, one of the now cars. Ambassador. From the 1967 American Motors. At your American Motors Rambler dealer, now.